down to that that 81860, which I think is what was left there. Hopefully that's what was left. Okay, so then we're going to go uh, see if there's anything else we need to record in this kind of miscellaneous items. We did all that. Now, the, the next thing we need to do is record the cost of goods sold. So remember, we did this, this full calculation here, which allowed us to basically get to the cost of goods manufactured. Look at the prior video on how we got to these numbers. And then we use that to get to the cost of goods sold. So the cost of goods sold is going to be a debit to the cost of goods sold and a credit to the finished goods inventory. So, and that's kind of linked to this journal entry up here. Remember, we recorded the sales and now we're recording the costs of goods sold related to those sales, meaning the inventory, the finished goods we're using. So I'm going to say the finished goods is going to go down. So I'm going to skip a line, put it on the bottom for a credit and the cost of goods sold, that big expense is going to be the debit here and that will be four equal to and scroll down to the cost of goods sold here and then we're going to credit the finished goods like so and if we record that out then we're going to say cost of goods sold is this debit and the finished goods up here finished goods where did you go right there should be the credit and there we have that now if now, a couple other miscellaneous items we had down here was the uh, on the income statement, we recorded the fact that we are going to owe taxes. So that's going to be a big one. And we said that on the income statement, that's going to be 23263. Uh, so that's why we added that, you know, tax account up here. So we're going to say we didn't pay it yet. We're going to say we have a payable here. So we have a payable, which is going to go up with a credit. And we're going to debit the income tax. So the income tax is going to be the debit. And that will be for, and we'll scroll down to the income statement where we calculated that. It's not affecting cash, but we have this number down here, right there. And there we have that. So I'm going to do that. And we'll scroll up and we're going to record the income tax. So here's the income tax. Uh, Oh, I put the interest into here. This interest should be going up to, yeah, so I'm going to cut this and it should actually be going up, up, up here. So I'm going to put it right there. That's where the interest should go. It shouldn't be in the tax line. And then the tax is going to be this 23,263. And we will put it into the tax payable right here. So there's the tax payable. And note this will keep us in balance. Now it's, it's, it's not green over here because we're off by rounding and you could fix the conditional formatting to fix that, but we're not gonna go into that at this point. Now there's one more kind of major accrual piece that we gotta take care of here. I'm gonna add another line right there. And that has to do with the fact that uh, we had this payable here. Remember we increased the uh, payable for what we purchased and then we paid some of that off. So that one, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna, we're gonna pay some of that with cash. So I'm gonna say the payable is gonna go down and we're going to pay it with cash. So remember what happens is we buy things on account and then we pay them off. Uh, and the question is when, when do we pay them off? But this problem happened to say that we pay, we buy something and then we pay it off the next month. So for example, if we look up here, we're going to say that uh, this payable, the 205 is something that we're going to pay in the next month. And we're always going to be a month behind, meaning we're going to purchase it on account and then we're going to pay for it a month later. So that means that basically what are we going to pay off? We're going to pay that equals that 205 to 100,005 plus we're going to have to pay off the other purchases here. So raw materials budget. Here's our purchases. We paid off July, August and September is what's still going to be left in ending inventory. So I'm going to add to this amount. We're going to say plus the two O, or we can even point to these plus this plus this. And that will leave us with this hopefully left in the AP. Let's see if that's the case after we post this out. So I'm going to say this is the debit and the credit here. And we're going to scroll up and go to the accounts payable. Double click, go to the end of it plus. And we're going to say that's the debit there. And so there we have, and then we're left with that 191625. And then if we go to the cash, we're going to say, okay, let's go to the cash. And that will be decreasing the cash brings us to that 40. That looks familiar. So, so I think that's basically it. Now notice if you do this journal entry by journal entry, 
then it has to be in balance. You can see exactly which journal entry will throw you out of balance. And now you can go tick and tie off all your numbers. I can say, okay, let's go look at the balance sheet here and see if this uh, ties out to it. So we'll scroll down balance sheet here and we'll say, yeah, that works. And then you can basically go line by line and say, all right, I got to scroll way back. How about three, three, seven, six, eighty, three, three, seven, six, eighty. Is that tying out to our balance sheet here? It does right there. There's the balance sheet. Then we're looking for that 84,000, which is going to be this 84,000. And then I'm going to go ahead and hide these cells. Hide. And then we're looking for the finished goods, 321, uh, 321, 360. So I'll scroll on down to the balance sheet down here, 321, 360. Then we're looking for the, the, uh, net should be 517 of these two, which is going to be this minus this. So 517 book value on the equipment. So that's going to be the book value on the equipment. This minus this is 5. 17.5 so that's right I think we already checked it off this and then you could just go through all of these and if you and if you're off by any of them then of course that's where you need to dig down and see if the journal entry is is not right so that's one way you can basically try to uh, figure out something that's off balance is actually do the journal entries that would be for the predicted or projected time period